I mean, you can commit various heinous crimes and you still, based on the law of this this country, you still have to go through trial. There is no judge executioner type laws that we have. You understand what I'm saying? So when the conversation goes to the point of, well, what did he do to get it? Well, it doesn't really matter what he did. He's still entitled to have a, a, a due process. At the end of the day, he's entitled to that due process, whether he had a counterfeit bill, whether he stole a car, whether like it doesn't matter what the previous, the the uh, you know uh, the prequel, what led, yeah, what led up to it, he still should have had due process, and I think that's where a lot of people get frustrated is because they deflect from well, they took his life to well, what did he do to deserve, to deserve that? Nothing. We're very deliberate about believing that United States means united. And so we wanted to have a lot of diversity on our panel. And we had some technical difficulties, but they'll be joining us for the next episode. So, uh, but for Kurt and um, Bryson and um, Jada, have you all experienced racism at all in your life? Yeah, I thought I was very surprised by the answers. And Chris, I heard you kind of chuckle too. Um, do you think it's a generational thing? Like, is this is it because this generation is just open to diversity, or what do you think? You know, the change is. I mean, I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> it, it's all, it's almost in perspective because right. I was speaking to someone that um, one of the families that attends um, Bryson School, and they have a a, a, a fellow. A, Boy, just graduated this year, and he is a senior. And when some of Bryce's friends, I'm not gonna say their names, when they were talking to the mom about this child, they said, "Well, he's not really black." And I'm thinking, like, he's the he's he is definitely black. So I think in that perspective, this generation, they it, if it's it's not outside their bubble, you know, it's like from their perspective, you know, it's that we we live in. I'm not saying kumbaya. It's just it's it's a different generation. So I really don't know. I, I have no idea, I, you know, to even look at this, to, to, cause I, I was thinking it was going to be totally, totally opposite, you know, but I mean, I grew up in the South, so it was, it's a different thing, you know, in the yeah. South, it's just known, it's just, you know, not necessarily um, over, it's more covert racism, you know, yeah. so, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you kind of like, uh, I, 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 you know, the person that driving the rebel flag, hey, I'm not messing with that, that kid there, or that person that to stay, to stay in your place per yeah. se. But I think this generation here to see, you know, what the movement is going on now is. Um, we were talking earlier about um, media. You know, it's it's different. I think they're they're real time with with social media, and I, I see action. I mean, this generation, I'll be honest, we skipped out. I think skipped our generation. I think we more like talk. You know, we were like maybe a moment. And this generation here, it's like it's about a movement. It's, it's like, like I'm, I'm, it. I'm into it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't no matter where it is. So yeah. that's kind of that's my two cents. So as a police officer, how does this spill over? Because you're a, a, a unit of brothers, <laughs> but, but there's always a bad apple in every bunch. You know, we get that. But I can, I can only imagine, like, does it cause discord? Or how, how are you all maneuvering uh, through the, the current events? The, a police department is set up like a military. You have your different chains of commands and your levels. Um, you don't want to step on toes to where you offend your sergeant or your lieutenant or your captain or your chief. And a lot of people in those positions are white males. So say you want to talk about this topic. To be quite honest, I was, I was offended that minorities weren't talked to on our department about this and how we feel. Mm -hmm. If you care about the state of what's going on, and how we should address it, address it to make change. You should have came to your minority officers and said, "How do you guys feel about this? You know, it's this. You know, the the, the uh, citizens believe this trend is going on. Our numbers say this. Numbers don't mean nothing. It's 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 black children dying at a rapid rate. Mm -hmm. We took this job as minorities to promote minorities policing their own community." We want to encourage that so this can stop. But 
it's going to be hard to do if we can't speak freely and tell you no. No, we don't agree with it. We don't agree that they don't feel comfortable applying for this job because they feel like they're going to get weaned out on something because they have facial hair or they have dreads. Or well, what's yeah. wrong with why? Why can't you have dreads in police? Yeah. What is that interfering with? <laughs> you can't be escalated. And that's the stuff that people don't know about. Yeah. Right? It's just that you know, we're fighting every day. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's deep to me that, you know, I, I pride myself in being an agri police officer, but it's, it's, it's still things that has to change in the inner workings to make a, an effective change. I, I believe we do well here as a police department in Akron, but I feel like it's certain pieces that need to be moved. We have uh, uh, great leaders like at, and minority leaders and Lieutenant Miller, uh, Kenny Williams, sar a sergeant, a great sergeant. We have Officer Oko, you told him Oko that went to high school with us. Uh, he just got promoted to sergeant. We are infiltrating and trying to commit to change, but it's it's hard when you have that system set up. It's hard to penetrate. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah, That's really deep. So w while we're uh, kind of along this level, I saw a meme on Facebook, and actually I would like all of you to answer this question. How, what would your response be to this? It says, can't we all agree that all lives matter and stop making this about race? That's, that's that ignorant is bliss <laughs> mentality right there. Yeah. You Just because we saying black lives matter does not mean all lives don't matter. I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys seen it. That, that's a comedian that uh, came out and said, oh, you know, I, I broke this toe, but I'm, I'm not going to get that fixed because I don't want to offend all the other toes. Right, right. You know. The issue is black lives. We're seeing black people die at a rapid rate due to law, law ref, uh, enforcement response. You know, you know, I've seen videos of de-escalation where a white dude got out the car, cussing, wailing, and goes to his trunk. I'll get my shotgun and right. this. And no, sir, please, no, no, right. no. Where is that patience when a child is playing out in the street with a, with toy, a toy gun? gun. And and it was known that the the dispatcher said it is probably a, a where is that yeah. yeah where is that patience man where is the disconnect man you know it's frustrating as a as, a, as an officer mm -hmm. and I'm sure I got white officers on uh, that's my brothers that feel the same way but you know when when we make excuses oh well this was the circumstances and this is you going off procedure go what's good what's right you know right come on man yep. yeah um I think. The, the way I heard it uh, the best is, uh, and actually this was recently, this was um, uh, a guy that, uh, Emmanuel, I can't even think of his last name, but he does the uncomfortable oh, talks with that? the black, uncomfortable. Ach Acho. Yeah, Emmanuel Acho, and he was saying that um, when it comes to the whole all lives matters thing, uh, I think people kind of look at this, he said, look at it as like the, the coronavirus, like right now, uh, there is a disease happening or there's an epidemic happening in the United States that requires our full attention. Um, and right now that's the black lives being, you know, uh, ended. Uh, at the same time, it's not like during this pandemic that people have forgotten about cancer research and HIV research. We haven't forgotten about that. But right now what we need to solve is this this pandemic that is right now, that is right in front of our face, that's systemic, that hasn't changed. Uh, and I think that was the best way I kind of heard it, uh, kind of explained to me. I don't know. What about you guys? I'll jump on it very quick. It's the time thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's always everyone's different perspective. You know, when um, I know somebody that that I'm acquaintance with, my wife is also, and their husband is a police officer, a, a state state trooper, and all of her posts were like, "Hey, you know, you know, protect the cops. Look at all these looters." Da da da. da. And I'm thinking, I, I don't think they get it. I don't. They, you know, I I, I I do want you know for his safety to, to be there because you know I know him. He's a good guy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean not a good guy as I know he's done, done well, but I know him. I mean, I want his well being. You know. But from certain people's perspective, they're thinking it's like it's about all cops. You know, it's, it's about or or yeah. You're, if you talk about one person, you're talking about everyone. And I think that the 
when we look at it now, it's not about everybody. It's about looking at the the, the ones that are are, are mis you know, uh, abusing power. Yes. But on the same on that same token, I want you to think about this though. So, you know, we as a minority, black males, you know, we we you know we we're let us go ahead, let's fight for our cause, whatever that is. On that same cause, here go police officers or or. Or you know, we'll, we, this is our cause also. Everyone has their own "quote unquote" cause, so it's like, hey, this got to be equal. I, I think we're a nation of everybody's entitled. They they think we're own we're owed something right now, and right now it's time to stop and just think. So I, I don't even know how to just kind of put it in there like that. But right now, what what the straw that broke the camel's back for me, I know this country terms up, but <laughs> when I when I saw that. Uh, that also, and I, I don't even know his name because, be honest with you, I try to watch. I, I do respond on social media. Uh, I try to watch as little TV as possible because I've been doing a lot of work outside. But when I saw this police officer, that 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 look, and all I saw was the picture. I thought it was a meme. I I did not think it was correct. But then this police officer was kneeling on the guy, and he had his hands in his pocket, and him having his hands in the pocket was like, I'm I'm good. I'm chilling. Like I'm in a rest. Spot now, I don't know anything about law enforcement. Officer. I ain't trying to tell you, I ain't been to one train at all. But when I saw that, I'm like, man, this is really serious. And it wasn't about that one event. Everyone keeps thinking about talking about about this George Floyd. It wasn't, it's not George Floyd, he's not the thing that just that was a callus that sparked everything. It's compounded over time. And you can only tap somebody so much on their shoulder before they say, Stop, please, stop, please, stop, please. Now they spirit. I heard it, what? I heard it. And the analogy you said it's like having a pimple and it, it just keeps going and going and eventually it's just gonna it is it's gonna it bust is. so I, that's that's kind of where it is right now and i used to like another analogy one this this lady is want to be a journalist she shared a um a um, diagram of jesus and if you don't believe in jesus i'm not trying to throw religion on you just for for just you know just a, for a picture jesus was here like going towards one of the sheep that was hanging off the cliff and in the background the 99 or the rest of the sheep were like all lives matter all <laughs> lives matter and there's that one sheep that was astray like look all y'all lives do matter but right now this sheep is about to fall over and die i'm about to go grab him right. so y'all y'all good right now we're like we'll talk about the other issues because we still need to talk about all the other issues that's on but right now what's the what's the what's the, the what's the main issue right now what's going on and that's what we need to focus on so i think that's what we got to do that's my and to, to express that more, like this is how I feel about it. Like we never said that all lives didn't matter. Mm -hmm. We never said that only black lives matter. We said that black lives matter because that's the issue that is at hand. And that's that's something that needs to, you know what I'm saying, that needs to be expressed more because obviously we see something and it's, it's something that's happening. So we're expressing that black lives matter because there's things happening. We wouldn't be expressing that. We wouldn't be saying that, because you can't say all lives matter without, with, without leaving out the black community, because that that's a contradiction. That you're saying that all lives matter, but leaving out the black, you know, what I'm saying the black lives, that doesn't exactly. speak to all lives. You're leaving that out. So we have to say we have to um, we have to get more, you know, what I'm saying um, more in depth, and we have to go. We have to say black lives matter because it's black lives that are out here being killed. It's black lives that are out here being racially profiled. It's black lives that are that are out here being oppressed and depressed by the um, the systematic, you know, injustice that we're that we're facing in the U.S. today. So it's like that's the big problem. We're just trying to express black lives matter. We know that all lives matter, but until y'all, until others get that black lives matter, then you know what I'm saying. You don't understand the full meaning of all life. All lives matter until you know that black lives matter. So what what changes would would you like to see in the world and in the system laws? I know this is kind of a heavy question I just threw out, um, and maybe you can start, Mama Bear. But like, what changes would you guys kind of like to see across the board in legislation and procedural changes? Maybe you know, and how they uh, how they police. Um, I don't know. Like, what changes would you guys like to see? I mean, it starts with education. You know, equal opportunity education. You know, you have all these private schools that gets all these benefits and, you know, these 
things for them to excel at the next level. And in the public industry, school industry, they get in the bare minimum. Yeah. You know, so then it becomes a glass ceiling that they feel like they can't break. And, and, yeah. and then right. with that, you go to career, the career path. What career path do they feel that they have besides, you know, I'm about to sell some weed to get my money. Yeah. All right. If I, can get, if I can't get it, I can't feed them. I got to guess I got to go over here on the next side of town and rob somebody so I can feed my family. Right. Now we profiling these people, you know, and saying all oh, that they're scum. They're the ones that's tearing up the community. No, this has started beyond that. You know? Right. You know, so it, it started way back in their their early childhood. I mean, I guess we're even seeing that as educators because with uh, everything happening, like with the corona and distance learning, the lower income community. Like as far as devices to even get online, mm-hmm. or cable, or cable, to have internet. <laughs> I mean, we. I think uh, the coronavirus kind of exposed a lot of the systematic injustices or the systematic differences. So, I mean, we had tons of students no Wi-Fi. They don't have a device to do the work. So, how can they during this time of distance learning ever excel? Right. Like it's already going to be set up for them to be behind. Uh, to where, you know, other school districts may have a one-to-one ratio with, you know, devices, devices and live in uh, different neighborhoods to where, you know, they never had to even think not to live without Wi-Fi. Some, you know what I'm saying? That's like just the everyday life. Being in education, I already see the struggle starting from the beginning. Right. Like not knowing the way out, not knowing what to even do. And kind of being stuck in that in that cycle, and I mean, it's kind of like um, you hear, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah. But what if I don't have any boots? Right. right. <laughs> like I'm barefoot. Yeah. 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 What about you guys, you youngins? I think it starts like with the government. I think it starts with them giving us opportunity, and it's like it's like a big cycle of money that's just going and staying and staying in the wealth to the wealthy people. They have it, and it's just staying to them. But it's like it's not coming to the oppressed communities. It's not coming down to them. So it's just like it's just opportunity that that black people are not getting, or minorities are not getting. You know what I'm saying? So it's just I don't know. It's like through colleges, it's just oppor- the lack of opportunity that we get. So it's like like you said. So they have to go back to selling drugs. They have to go back, and you know that's a dangerous life because it's like. Um, I got to sell this or I'm not going to eat or I got to sell this. You know what I'm saying? I got to do this or my family's not going to eat. My child's not going to, my, my family's not going to make it. Like my mom's at home sick, you know what I'm saying? So I got to do this. So, so it become where somebody else of the, the, the same minority, that person got to do the same thing. But it's like, he can't get it the way he get it. So he might try to steal from him. But he's like, hey, I can't let you do that because I got to protect somebody at home. So I got to kill you. I got to take your life. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a whole, oh, it's a whole loop. Blind, it's a whole systematic blind. oppression. It just starts with, you know, the root of the situation. And that's just something, you know, the government got to help us with. To chime in on that, I don't think the government is ever going to take a stand unless we make them take yeah. a stand. Take a stand. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we got to show them that they really work for us. Right. You know, so that that, in, that includes with, you know, you know, understanding the value of our dollar mm-hmm. and, you know, not, not spending with those corporations. And, you know, we got... Health, to realize health and wellness is among that because you know, you know, in our community, we're more obese, we're more sickly. Mm-hmm. You know, we gotta really hone in on taking care of ourselves, having our own restaurants, having our own clothing lines, and you know, we all we always have been the way. You know, and support. Always, you know, they always have intimidate. I mean, uh, wanted to follow us, so you know, we can build our own ecosystem to where they have to acknowledge, like, okay. We losing it. Right. We losing our grit. You know, so I think we need to parents should teach your children that there is racism in the world. Mm-hmm. Teach them at a young age and then like as they grow up, that they need to teach it in schools and stuff so they can like educate like the past like history of racism. And no matter your race, your gender, your political views, anything, you need to stand up for what's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think for me, I would want to see a change in education just from my own personal experience, you know, going to a private Christian school where it's predominantly, you know, white 
people everywhere. It's just like, um, for me, I never got the opportunity to kind of learn about my own history, like my black history, unless I looked it up for myself or, like you it know, wasn't taught. it was not taught. We were only taught about, you know, the bad things like slavery and then, you know, a little touching here and there on Frederick Douglass or maybe like the jazz era, like era, but we wouldn't like talk about anything. That's sad. Man. Yeah. That's and sad. it wasn't. And it's probably usually during February. No, we didn't even celebrate it. Oh, really? They didn't do that at all. And it was like, it wasn't until my senior year that we literally had to go to the person who does like the clubs and everything to make our own club to actually celebrate different, you know, minority like holidays. Like, and this is in your private school? Yes. Right. right. I just want to make that clear because that's yes. what they do. You know, you have yep. the opportunity to go. You, Your parents work hard to put you in there and then they, they hide your history from you. Yep. Yeah. Man. That's heavy. So we're talking about the issues. We talked about what the changes are. What do you feel is your part in this? What are you passionate about in your life that you're going to do to help cause change in this world? I can answer that first while everyone else is thinking. Sure. Uh, growing up, I never, not one time, thought I would be a teacher. Like, ever. I mean, it never crossed my mind until it actually happened. And now that it's here, I feel like it is my passion, it is my purpose, because in the education system, how we talked about how it's um, so lopsided, it's also lopsided in uh, the staffing. So, you know, it's predominantly female, and then even on top of that, it's predominantly white female. So black males in education are slim to none. So now you have a whole bunch of young black men uh, who are, I mean, it's fine. I'm not, you know, taking anything away from other educators, but you have a bunch of young black men who can't relate to the person that they see for six hours a day for 10 years of their life. So how can they stay engaged? So how, how can they, yeah, how can they stay engaged? So I think my purpose and what I can do to help is to make sure Though, believe me, education is not the <laughs> highest pain. <laughs> you got to have a couple of sides. Yeah, you you, you got you to gotta know how to, you know, do your coin. But uh, I think my purpose is to make sure that my students see that, hey, you don't, you're not stuck in a box. You have a choice as a black male to kind of rise above, you know what I'm saying? And I, I give them that power and I give them their options. I mean, it's as simple as this. So we push a lot of people to go to a traditional university. Like we push, push, push it. We never really push like trade school. Uh, we never push uh, things like even something as small as becoming a barber, like learning a skill. You know what I mean? Entrepreneurship. We don't, we don't teach credit. We don't do any of that. So, and that's across the board with education, but especially with black males, uh, they, they're never really given that, that fair shake or they never really see that positive, side of you know their their life or what it could be my barber right now makes probably double what i make you know what i'm saying he's cutting hair but and when i told my students that they were shocked like you know but it's because it's the lack of knowledge is that the whole ignorance thing is not knowing your potential and always being stuck in that system over and over again because you have no one that can relate to you like a lot of you kid, a lot of these children have zero people that can actually relate and empathize with their situation. Right. And if you can't empathize with someone, you will never understand where they're coming from, ever. And I think, well, we've been in it, but so many times you see where people think they're empathizing, but they're actually setting lower expectations. Mm -hmm. And so, no, I want you to push them harder yeah. <laughs> because they've had it hard. Not feel sorry for them, so dummy down what you're trying to do with them. Right. Um, that's kind of exactly how I feel about, you know, my influence and the impact that I can have is, is um, cause it's, it's about living it, you know what I'm saying? So we realize the issue, we recognize the issue, we see the issue and then and it's, we address the issue. And it's at this point, it's about showing that, you know what I'm saying? From the black communities that I'm someone, you know, from the, the black community who raised who was raised the same way you was, you know what I'm saying? And I can I, I make it out. I made it out, you know what I'm saying? So it's about living and it's about showing that you can ha this can happen. This life can happen for you, you know what I'm saying? It's just certain 
ways and certain things you got to go about. You got to have wisdom. And it's just, you got to be an example. You know what I'm saying? So me going to um, college and then majoring in public relations, motivational speaking was something I always dreamed about doing. That was something I always, you know what I'm saying, had in my heart to do. I always wanted to go back into the communities and speak and just motivate people. But just not, it's just not about speaking. It's just, it's about the, what they see, you know, what the realness that they see in you, in you, you know what I'm saying? They, they yeah. seen how you actually came up from that place, how you grew up from that place, and you made it out. And they seen the process, and then you explain to them that process. You explain to them how to get there, how to keep going, how to keep pressing, you know what I'm saying? How to have momentum to build up, and you know what I'm saying, to get through it. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my um, impact. Hey, what was the original okay. question again? Yeah. What they felt passionate, what, what are they passionate about to um, bring for change? I just want to say that's inspiring, man, to hear that you are the age that you are, and that's how you feel, man. That's, it's just, you know, I felt the energy, I felt the passion, and, and the meaning in that, you know. It, I, it just made me flash back to where I was when I was young, and, you know, when it was time for me to go away to college, you know, I felt overwhelmed because I'm from the west side of Akron. Right. And you know, can I really go out of here and make it? You know, we, because you know, all my boys are stuck here. Right. Can I go and make it happen? And I, I made a choice to make it happen, you know, and yeah. you speak life into it. You were speaking life into that and putting that into others, you know, and that's that's a powerful thing. Jada? Um, I think for me, you said how to make an impact, right? Mm -hmm. For me, since I work, you know, I'm a coach, a JV girls basketball coach, and all the girls that I coach are – you know, they're all the majority race and everything. So I just want to make an impact to, you know, just to kind of, I don't really want to say relate to them, but, you know, to have them, you know, look, kind of look up to me as a role model, like someone who is a minority, who is of minority race to see that, you know, I'm in college, I'm, you know, a full-time student, also being basically like a full-time coach during basketball season and everything and I just want them you know I just want to make an impact to show them that just kind of like I'm not what they're used to seeing like on TV you know mm -hmm. like a stereotype mm -hmm. like I'm actually you know like it's a lot of us who has goals who's striving to I do see. things and everything like that so I just want them to see that but also relate to me in a sense I guess mm -hmm. you want to bridge that gap you yeah yeah. I want to show them, don't view me as what you see on BET or behind that right. video. Right. I'm, I'm a powerful woman, mm -hmm. minority woman. Mm -hmm. I can educate you. I can educate you on my history and your history as well. Right. You know, that's yeah. deep. Yeah. yeah. 